every false religion that has come on the scene that has tried to distort Christianity started by redefining terms that sound biblical but did not have a biblical meaning. One of those false religions that exist today is something called neo-evangelicalism, also known as evangelicalism, which is a distortion of true biblical fundamental Christianity. Ladies and gentlemen, when you're dealing with these people, they will throw religious terms at you that have some meaning, but really not a biblical meaning. Basically, these people have redefined Bible terms, and to you it means one thing, and to the Bible it means one thing, but in their mind it means something else. To help you deal with these people, we have come up with what we would call the Neo-Evangelical Translation Chart. Hey guys, your friend Spencer. Neo-evangelicalism is what basically is mainline Christianity here in North America. And these people are all the time hurling biblical cliches at you. But really, it's hard to deal with these people because what you think they're saying and what they're actually saying is not necessarily the same thing. So we put this together for you so that you can know what these people are going to throw at you. And there's basically five big things that they use all the time. The first one is our favorite, judge not. Wow, have you heard that one before? The second one is, well, just just pray for them. Don't don't say a whole lot. Just just pray for them. Number three is, well, we're we're all sinners. And then number four is, well, I, God is love. And and they throw that around a lot. And then the last one is, well, you just have a bad spirit. And we're going to break these down for you one by one and give you the real meaning of what they're saying when they actually say these things. Let's start with number one, judge not. Now, the irony of the judge not cliche that's thrown at people is that when people say, well, you're judging or judge not, the irony of that is, is that by them actually saying that, they're actually judging you. But they'll never understand that because these people are basically biblically illiterate. So let's reveal the real meaning of the phrase judge not is stop condemning something that I like. If I like it, I don't want you messing with it. And if I like it, I don't want you putting it down. So I'm going to throw this phrase at you that sounds spiritual, but really is just a manifestation of my carnality. And it translates into this stop condemning something that I like. If you need to pause the video now and get your blood pressure medication, I would understand. All right, number two. Let's go to number two here. Well, just pray for them. You know, when, when John Christ is get, gets busted assaulting teenage girls and uh, get, getting drunk and living a double secret life, well, the answer is, and it sounds real spiritual, well, just pray for them. Don't make a YouTube video exposing this. Don't, 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 say, don't say that Hillsong and the pastor of Hillsong are taking shots in a bar. Don't, don't expose. Just instead of saying something, why don't you just pray for them, which sounds spiritual, but there's another hidden meaning behind that. Let's reveal what that meaning is. Number two, the meaning of just pray for them is stop exposing their sin because I basically do the same thing. I don't want you saying anything about them and their biblical inconsistency and their open immorality and the way they misrepresent Christianity. I don't want you exposing their sin because I basically do the same thing. And when you say the things about that guy, oh, it makes me uncomfortable. So really, I'm not defending them. Really, I'm defending my own spiritual condition. And so I'm just going to throw out a, a, a cliche, the, a, a something that is sound spiritual to you. And I'm going to say, well, won't you just pray for them? When the truth is, I really don't want you to pray for them. I just want you to stop talking about their sin because I do the same thing. Number three, we are all sinners. You know, I understand Adolf Hitler did the Holocaust, but we're all sinners. And I understand Karl Marx killed millions of people, but we're all sinners. I understand that, you know, Mao Zedong killed millions of people, but, you know, we're all sinners. And this crowd right here likes to pretend, basically what they're saying is, is that running three minutes late for work is the same as murdering a family of people with an axe. 
Which I don't know how you get something crazy like that. I mean, the intellectual dishonesty of a statement like that is absolutely off the charts, so it's not even worth dealing with something like that. Well, we're all sinners, and what does that really mean? Let's expose the meaning. Basically, it means exposing their sin makes me nervous because I am in sin as well. Basically, if you deal with his sin and I agree with you that this is wrong, then therefore I have to turn that on myself and realize that what I'm doing is wrong too, and I'm not willing to go there. So I'm just going to throw a pious phrase out there and just say, well, we're all sinners. That's what they're saying. That's exactly what they're saying, and you know I'm telling you the truth. Number four gets a little bit better here, but God is love. And that is a great verse in the New Testament. It says that God is love, but it also seems to omit God is holy, and God is righteous, and God is just. And so when they say God is love, what they're meaning is not the biblical meaning of that. What they're meaning is, I have rejected the holy God of the Bible, and I have created a God in my own mind that loves my sin like I do. Let's read that again just for somebody out there who didn't get it the first time. I have rejected the holy God of the Bible and have created a God in my mind that loves my sin like I do. So what they mean by God is love, they're not talking about God's mercy and grace to us as poor sinners. Basically what they're saying is, you know, I love what I'm doing and so... I'm just going to take that verse out of context and say that God is love. Therefore, God just accepts every little thing that I do. 100% wrong. God doesn't accept my sin. God doesn't accept your sin. God accepts nobody's sins. The only thing that God accepts is his son, Jesus Christ. And so the only way I can be accepted in the eyes of God is to have his son's record imputed unto my account. And so when I say that, you know, you shouldn't drink beer, well, God is love. That, that is not the biblical meaning of that phrase. What you're saying is, I've rejected who God is and God's righteousness and God's justice and I'm just going to create a God in my own mind that loves my sin just the way that I do and that's who I'm going to choose God to be for me which is a subjective form of theology that really does not fit with the Bible. If you're going to be a Bible-believing Christian, you have to believe the Bible, and you have to let the Bible call all matters of faith and practice. You have to allow the Bible to be right and you to be wrong. And when you're throwing around phrases like that, you're probably not doing that. And lastly, this is the one that I think is my most favorite. You have a bad spirit. So when I can show you chapter and verse on a subject that God has spoken clearly and unapologetically about, there is no room for interpretation. It is black words on a white piece of paper. And you turn around and say, well, you have a bad spirit. This is basically what you mean. I am unlearned in doctrine. Therefore, I will attack your person instead of your position. If I'm wrong, show me that I'm wrong. Show me that I'm wrong from the Bible. I, I'm, I'm open to that. There's been many times in my Christian life where I have said things and, and taught things, and someone says, well, no, let me show you. that The Bible actually says this. And I didn't fire back at them as, you have a bad spirit. You know what I did? I said, thank God. This is wonderful. Thank you for telling me the truth about the Word of God. I am so thankful that you said that. Hallelujah. I'm going to correct my theology right now. Instead of saying something like this, well, you just have a bad spirit, which basically means I'm unlearned in doctrine and therefore I'm going to attack your person instead of your position. So there it is, ladies and gentlemen, the New Evangelical Translation Chart that explains to you what these people are actually saying. And the funny thing about Neo Evangelicals is that these people are the self-proclaimed champions of grace in this modern era, when the truth is they are the biggest Pharisees on the planet today. These people have basically rejected God's standards of right and wrong and therefore have made their emotions the standard of right and wrong. It's not about what God says. It's about, it's about what we feel about what God says. It's not really about the truth. It's really about our feelings and our emotions. It's really not about the authority of God's Word. It's about, you know, what makes me feel good. That's what I want to go with today. And they throw out these sayings as if they're some sort of pious, well, you know, you guys with your doctrine, you guys are over there thumping your Bible and beating people up with your Bible, but, you know, we don't judge. That makes you the Pharisees. Could it be that maybe you guys are the Pharisees of today? I shouldn't really call you guys Pharisees, but at the same time, it was a whole lot better than what I was going to call you. I was going to call you a bunch of virtue signaling, gaslighting, narcissistic, self-righteous, moralistic people who are lost in your own religiosity and you really don't know God, but I thought it would just be a lot easier just to call you a Pharisee. So, you're the Pharisees. 
But again, I'm just the guy who just believes the Bible and just goes to what the Bible says, and I can show you chapter and verse for what I believe, but you know, whatever, I just have a bad spirit, and I'm just judging, and instead of just speaking out like the Apostle Paul did, and speaking out like Jesus did, and speaking out like Timothy did, and speaking out like Peter, James, and John did, maybe I should just do what you say and just pray for them, which basically you're just telling me I just need to be quiet about their sin, because you know, it makes you uncomfortable about your sin too. So maybe, maybe I should just do what you say and just not say anything about anything and let the world die and go to hell, because that's what you're doing. And since you're such a champion of grace, why aren't you going out reaching people and telling them about the grace of God? Why aren't you preaching on the grace of God? Why aren't you telling your co-workers about the grace of God? You're the champions of grace. I mean, you guys are the gracious ones. You know, you're the ones who are so much more advanced in your spirituality than I am, but you have no Bible for what you believe. That's kind of weird. And so there it is, ladies and gentlemen, the neo-evangelical translation chart. I will leave that for you. And who knows? This is just my opinion. You know, say what you will. Do what you will. I'm just some guy with the Bible.